subatomic particles, radio astronomy, nuclear physics, lasers millions of times more powerful than the sun, levitating frogs, Manchester United, New Order, the largest student campus in Western Europe. Welcome to Physics at the University of Manchester. All the universities I applied to had very good nightlifes and Manchester had the best. Um, I then found out when I was here I was also in one of the best departments in the country and I've had no regrets about coming to Manchester. It's a fun place to be, everybody's friendly, much more than a lot of other cities I've been to. There's so much to do, it really genuinely is whatever you're into, there's something to do here. And we've got three universities, the student population pretty much rules that. Why would you come to Manchester? Well, the research at, uh, at Manchester is world class. It's also a good city, there's, there's many things around Manchester, like the Peak District, you can get to the Lake District, you can get to North Wales very easily. It's a good city to, uh, to be in, it's also a good city to get out of because it's very easy to get out of. If, if you want to come and have a good time and be able to afford it, Manchester is definitely one of the better places to come. Paradise! Yeah. In a bucket, come on guys. It's really good, there's so many bands come from Manchester and the sport's so good and there's such good nightlife. And the thing about Manchester that I've noticed as well is that, in the, well especially in the student areas where you live, you can go out in the area that you live, you don't have to go into town, you can have a good night out just on your doorstep basically. Uh, well, I think uh, Manchester as a university city has a lot to offer because it has something approaching 70,000 full-time students here. We have a departmental football team, a hockey team, a cricket team, a rugby team, a music group, uh, wanders off into the Peak District and Lake District, so that the, the whole department can have a sort of vitality of itself, as well as obviously the higher academic reputation. It comes you know, at school you do experiments and, and nothing, nothing's interesting, nothing works, you know, you do an hour's worth of experiment. But, but here, you know, you're measuring the speed of light, you're measuring real things, you're messing around with liquid nitrogen, all this sort of stuff. You're doing really, really useful, interesting stuff um, that actually relates to real physics rather than measuring the temperature of boiling water. I enjoy the optics module, um, more so than anything else. Uh, I love learning about the lenses and the eye and all that kind of Stuff, so, yeah. Perhaps most interesting was the quantum mechanics course because you hear you hear lots of you know, buzzwords and things like new scientists and stuff and you don't really know what's going on. It's just when you actually get to hear some of it and you listen to the stuff in the lectures, it's just really, really quite strange but still really interesting at the same time. Well, if it, if it wasn't um, a lab day, I'd say normally I'd be going to a few lectures, three or four lectures maybe. Um, you spend the time in between the lectures looking over problem sheets and things. The lectures are, uh, are, are really good actually and um, obviously the tutorials help um, give you more interaction between the um, tutor and yourself so you can actually clear up things that you're quite stuck on but um, the lectures themselves are quite helpful and uh, quite informative. So. Uh, the classes that we get in Manchester are typically very big, they're, they're over a hundred, and it can be quite daunting for people to um, try and get things that they're not sure about clarified within the lecture environment, although the lecturer is always very happy if someone asks a question, it's just something that a lot of people don't feel comfortable about. So the tutorial, which is much more a one-to-one -one, um, interaction, is, is very valuable in helping people to actually have the confidence to say, I didn't understand that or I'd like another view on this, or whatever. So I think it's, it's a very important part of what we do. Um, it also helps us to get to know the students better. Well, the thing that attracted me initially, and which was, I was proved right with, it's just really, really friendly compared to a lot of the other departments, I really think it is, and they take a real interest in you as an individual. So uh, that's why I'd recommend it, because you'll be really supportive for that I to choose Manchester, a combination of like excellent course content and brilliant social life, probably two good actually. Manchester, first of all, the most attractive scenes of Manchester, it's the cheapest beer in the country. Well, Manchester is a great city, obviously. Um, amazing for students, huge student campus, loads and loads of cheap things to do. And the department's great, it's really large, it's really friendly. 
Um, you can blow people's minds away with the stuff that you learn. Why Manchester? Manchester, I think, is one of the most exciting places for physics in the UK. It's at the forefront of research in many areas. It's famous for its high energy physics, but also particularly, I think, for radio astronomy, because uh, radio astronomy was pioneered here. It was invented here, virtually. And uh, we've continued to do that sort of work at the highest level ever since. And this gets reflected down through the undergraduate courses which we teach. About half a dozen sunspots in this local course. Physics is the study of everything in the universe, from the unimaginably small, millions and millions of times smaller than atoms, to the incredibly large, the entire observable universe, 15,000 million light years of it. There is first-rate research going on in particle physics, which I know about, in nuclear oh, physics, oh, in solid-state physics. We have John Bank, the radio astronomers and the astronomers. There are other universities with good groups covering this or that research speciality. Manchester is probably the only place that covers all of them. You have top rank in everything in Manchester. Um, I think that the, the main uh, way in which the fact that we're, we're very active um, in a research way benefits the undergraduates is that people are continuously drawing on examples from up-to-date research areas, you know, the, the, the things that are happening now. Um, because if you're not careful, physics can get stuck in well into the last century. And to be able to bring it forward to what's going on today and to have that taught to you by um, people who are actually doing it, I think is bound to make it more interesting. And so we don't, we don't really know why this works at all. As a research group, we have a long history and culture of uh, being successful. That means uh, finding innovative uh, ways of doing the research and also bringing out the discoveries out of the science. And we operate in uh, mainly overseas. That's in Hamburg, Geneva, Chicago and California, doing particle physics experiments, mainly underground, in, in large tunnels. You need very reasonable magnets which are available in many laboratories around the world and then you can levitate whatever paper, uh, piece of wood, piece of plastic, water, cheese pizza or even live frog, whatever you put because as they say frogs can fly, even pigs can fly too. The laser beam we're looking at, the green beam here, it's producing eight and a half watts of light. That's over a million times brighter than the sun, and that allows us to, in very fine detail, probe atoms and molecules. John Bank Observatory does radio astronomy and optical astronomy uh, research. Well, at the moment, the, mo the biggest topical things are in cosmology, and there's a lot of work out at John Bank on the cosmic microwave background. We're measuring the fluctuations background. This is at levels of millionths of a degree. And uh, fluctuations tell us all about the evolution of the early universe and the formation of galaxies and things like that. And uh, this is a very much a hot topic in astronomy in the world at the moment. Things like quasars and galaxies, and stars and nebulae, all the sort of things that's in modern astronomy research. Um, we also run a couple of experiments out there for undergraduate students. And in their third year they can go out and work on a, a seven metre diameter telescope and move it around the sky and look at things. And there's also some data on the Crab Nebula Pulsar, which they can analyse and investigate the evolution of the Crab Pulsar. Well, this building, the Schuster Laboratory, was built in 1967. But the physics department goes back a lot further than that. And many very famous physicists have worked here. Here in Manchester in 1911, Rutherford, who was perhaps one of the greatest scientists that this country has ever known, discovered the nucleus uh, and was the start of a whole sequence of, uh, of events and people that continue right up to the present day. And on this occasion, I wish to say a few words on the methods and ideas employed to break up atoms. Uh, Einstein's connection with the university, only rather tenuous, I would say. He, he visited here in 1921, after the eclipse of 1919, when he predicted from his relativity theory that the bending of the light from the star as it passed the sun would be twice what you would expect on classical theory. 
overnight he became a world star and he came here almost immediately to tell us about it. So you've heard about a whole universe of phenomena researched in this building. And I think if you want to study physics, if you want to learn about that universe, there's no better place than Manchester.